Jacques Cousteau, Man of the Oceans, by Carol Green. Jacques Cousteau is a real person. He was born in 1910. He has learned and taught about life underwater. He has learned and taught about caring for the, o for the earth. This is his story. Chapter 1. Three Wonderful Things Jacques Cousteau was a small boy in France when he discovered a wonderful thing, water. He liked to watch it. He liked to watch ships float on it. He liked to watch stones sink in it. And most of all, he liked to touch water. Jacques wasn't strong. The doctor said he mustn't do much, but he learned to swim anyway. When he was 10, his family moved to New York for a year. Jacques and Pierre, his big brother, learned English. About that time, Jacques discovered another wonderful thing, machines. When he was 11, he built a model crane. It worked well, and when he was 13, he built the car that ran on batteries. That same year, he discovered a third wonderful thing, films. He saved his money and bought a home movie camera. Then he began to make his own films. At school, Jacques was bored and lazy. He was troublemaker, too. One day, he broke 17 windows. That did it. His parents sent him to a strict boarding school. To everyone's surprise, Jacques loved it. He began to study hard, but he didn't forget the three wonderful things he had discovered. He didn't know it then, but someday he would use them all. Water, machines, and films. Chapter 2. Navy Man. In 1930, Jacques went to France's Naval Academy. He did well. Three years later, he joined the French Navy and sailed around the world. Of course, he took his movie camera along. Next, he went to the Navy's flying school. He was almost ready to take his pilot's test, and then he broke both arms in a car crash. Now, he couldn't be a pilot, but friends told him swimming would make his arms strong again. So he stayed in the Navy and swam. One day, Jacques got some goggles. All at once, he could see underwater. That changed his life. He wanted to stay underwater longer and longer, so he began to work on breathing machines. In 1937, Jacques married a girl called Simone. She liked water, too. They had two little boys, Jean Michael and Philippe. In 1939, World War II began. Jacques fought the Germans, and he also became a spy. Once he dressed up as an enemy soldier. He took pictures of secret enemy papers, and later he got medals for his war work. But he still found time to work underwater. In 1943, he built a breathing machine that really worked. A man in Paris had helped him. With his new aqualung, Jacques could stay underwater a long time. After the war, divers used Jacques' aqualung to work underwater, getting rid of enemy mines. But by then, Jacques was off on new adventures. His camera went with him. Chapter 3, Calypso. Jacques wanted to explore the sea in a new way. He didn't want to kill anything. He wanted to learn and to make films. He tried, he tried to make his work as safe as he could, but there was danger. Once, he almost drowned in an underwater cave. Soon, Jacques knew he must have his own ship. In 1950, he got one. He named it Calypso. It had been a minesweeper, then a car ferry. All sorts of people traveled on Calypso. Scientists and sailors, Jacques' wife Simone, sometimes his children, and the family dog. Their first big trip was to the Red Sea. There they saw coral reefs like underwater cities. Jacques swam with bump fish and saw them crunch coral. Then, near France, they found a sunken ship full of wine jars. It had sunk over 2,000 years ago. They tasted the wine. Off Africa, they watched a school of whales. They saw the others protect a hurt whale by swimming around it. In the Indian Ocean, they dived on coral reefs. They swam through a fairyland of beautiful colors and shapes. The fish had never seen people before. They weren't afraid. One big grouper almost became a pet. They called him Jojo. Back in the Red Sea, they met fish so big that they called them truck fish. In the middle of the Atlantic Ocean, they found a starfish. It lived four and a half miles underwater. Of course, someone had to pay for these trips. Different groups helped. 
So did Jacques' films. Sometimes the Calypso worked for businesses. Jacques began to write books, like The Silent World and The Living Sea. Some became films, too, and won Oscars. At last, Jacques quit the French Navy. He had too many other things to do now. Chapter 4. More Adventures Can people live on the bottom of the sea? Jacques said yes. They could live there and work there, too. He called his first underwater home Cone Shelf One. It looked like a yellow barrel. Two men spent a week in it. They even had radio and TV. Con Shelf and Two and Con Shelf Three were bigger and went deeper. The men who lived in them learned a lot. But at last, Jacques decided that people shouldn't live underwater all the time. By now, his work had made him famous. He was asked to make a TV series. Jacques loved that idea. He went all over the world. He filmed sharks and whales, dolphins and sea turtles. He made shows about coral reefs, sunken treasure, octopuses and penguins. Cousteau's films have featured playful dolphins and humpback whales. Of course, he had problems. Once Calypso got caught in a war... Another time, the ship was chased by a typhoon, and finding enough money was always a problem. Some scientists felt Jacques' work was wrong. They felt real scientists shouldn't try to teach people who aren't scientists. But Jacques knew he was right. He had something important to teach, and everyone must hear about it. Chapter 5. Something Important Jacques saw many things as he traveled. Some were beautiful, some were not. He saw trash dumped into the water everywhere. He saw people fishing in ways that killed everything around. He saw oil spills. He saw people starving because other people ruined their water and land. He saw, he saw selfish people who just didn't care. Jacques knew that the earth needs its oceans. He knew that countries must work together to save the oceans. He told people about his books and films. He made speeches, too. In 1974, he started the Cousteau Society to Protect Ocean Life. In 1978, his son Felipe died in a helicopter crash. Jacques couldn't even talk about that. He just worked harder. His son Jean-Michael helped. In the 1980s, Jacques made more trips and films. He went to South America. He studied life in the Mississippi River. He visited Haiti. In 1985, President Ronald Reagan gave him the Medal of Freedom. That was a great honor, but most of all, Jacques Cousteau wants people to listen to him. He wants them to love and care for the earth and its oceans. He believes in children and wants them to have a healthy, beautiful planet. Here are the important dates. 1910, June 11th, he was born in Saint-André-de-Cuzac to France to Daniel and Elizabeth Costu. In 1930, he went to École, École Naval Academy at Brest. In 1937, he married Simone Melchor. In 1943, he built the first Aqualung. 1950, he got his own ship, the Calypso. 1962, worked with Con Shelf One. 1967, began work on TV series, The Undersea World of Jacques Cousteau. In 1974, he began the Cousteau Society. In 1985, received the Medal of Freedom. I hope you enjoyed that book and learned lots of things. Don't forget to write down your facts, the things that you have learned about Jacques Cousteau.